Today we'll be doing a beginner friendly tutorial that's great if you're new to Figma. If you've never opened Figma before, check out my other short video about navigating Figma, how to zoom in and out and stuff before you do this tutorial. In this one, we're gonna learn how to create a really, really common Instagram style profile page with a grid of photos for mobile. So let's get started. So let's create a new file. You can do that by doing Command N. As a reminder, if you're on a Windows computer, just replace Command with Control and then the shortcut should work fine. So this is a new file. I'm gonna go ahead and rename it profile page. So whenever you start a new Figma page, you most likely want to create a frame. Frames are basically containers for your designs. If you're familiar with design tools like Illustrator or Sketch, frames are essentially artboards. So you can create one by pressing F. There's also a um, button here that you can press manually, but it's way easier just to press F. On the right side, you'll see a lot of different frame sizes for common use cases. So a bunch of phone sizes here. There's like desktop sizing. There's also sizing if you wanna make like a print design thing. But we're gonna go ahead and pick iPhone 14 because we're making a mobile app. So go ahead and press that and you'll see that it shows up here. If you want, if you like accidentally end up like this really far away, you can do shift two and then you will zoom into the frame. Then finally, it's best practice to name all your frames and your layers. So I'm gonna name this profile for now. Now we're gonna make the cover photo area of the profile. So to start, press R for the rectangle tool, and you can just click and drag to create an area that kind of resembles a cover photo. If you want to be precise, the rectangle that I used in the example was 390 by 160. You can manually adjust the width and the height right here. Next, we're gonna change the fill color. So all shapes, things, layers, frames have a fill and a stroke. So if you want to change the fill, you can click this square right here and change it to whatever color you desire. I'm going to use pink, obviously. Stroke is something we'll touch on a little bit on later, but it's basically the outline of the selection that you have. Next, we're gonna add a profile picture. So to do that, we're gonna use O, which is the circle tool, oval tool, technically. Uh, so by default, when you draw an oval, it kind of goes like this. Um, it's not a perfect circle, but if you want to make something a perfect circle, you have to hold down shift. And so when you hold down shift, you'll notice that um, the sides are constrained so that they are even. I'm gonna go ahead and put this right here. Uh, something you can do that's a little bit more advanced and fun is you can actually draw from the center. So you can do that by holding an option and shift at the same time, and then you will draw a circle from the center of the page. I'm gonna go ahead and put that here. I'm just gonna make this 100 by 100 so that it's a nice number. So now we're gonna add a photo to this circle. So to do that, go ahead and click the fill again here, and we're going to use an image fill. So there are a lot of different types of fills when you click this drop down here. By default, it's a solid color, but you can also use an image fill, video fill, like gradients, which we'll touch on in a future tutorial. Go ahead and hit image fill and you can choose any image of your choosing, I'm just going to upload this picture. Now we're gonna add all the text to the top of the page. And so the text tool is very self-explanatory. You just press T, you can also find it up here. Uh, a lot of people like to click and drag a text box because that's what happens in uh, tools like PowerPoint. And so they like to do this, which I highly do not recommend because then it creates like really weird situations when you try to align objects together or if your text overflows the box. So instead of doing that, I would actually recommend using uh, just a click. So if you select the text tool T, you can just click anywhere on the screen and start typing like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and type my handle, oops, all caps, my handle at Elizabeth, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see a little better. But once you select a item of text, you can look on the right side and you'll see a bunch of different options here. You'll see the font selector. Unfortunately, Figma doesn't let you preview these, so the best way to do it is actually to go to Google Fonts and look at what they look like. Figma has all the Google Fonts imported for you beforehand, so you don't have to do as much font downloading as previous softwares did. I'm gonna go ahead and select Fira Sans, which is the one I'm using in the example. Here, you can change the font weight. I'm going to change it to bold. This is the font size. I'm gonna change it to 20. And then finally, I'm going to center the text here. 
There's some shortcuts you can learn for that as well, but you don't have to worry about that today. Also, just a little tip, you'll notice that I am looking at how far away this item is from this item, and it's really easy to do that. Just select something and then hold down Option or Alt and hover over the other items, and you will be able to see like, oh, this is 16 pixels away. One small thing, so if you don't like aligning stuff like this just by looking at the guides, this is a pretty easy way to align it, but maybe you have like something like really far away like this, and you want this to snap directly to the center of the page, you can experiment with these tools up here, which are the alignment tools. So right now, if I wanted this to move to the center, I would use align horizontal centers like this. Next, we're going to add another text box. I am going to do T for text and then click on the page again and add a short tagline. My usual tagline is design inspiring princess. Also again, going to center it here. And because this weight is super heavy, I'm just gonna make this regular font weight, make it a little smaller to create some type hierarchy. And then I'm going to change the fill opacity right here to 60. This is a really quick way to make something gray. So 60, and now you'll see I have gray text. Now we're gonna make a button. So to start, we're gonna start drawing a star. I just wanted to teach you how to draw a star because it's my favorite tool in Figma. But to find the star tool, there's actually no shortcut because people think it's unimportant, but if you click on this little drop down, usually it's default the rectangle tool, you'll see all the shape tools. I'm gonna click on star here. So if you click it and drag, you can draw a small star like this. On the right panel here with the star selected, you can change this angle of the star so that it's like more or less bloated. I kind of like it to be a little bit more bloated because I think it looks cuter that way and less like the default star. I'm also just gonna make it 20 pixels, so it's a nice number. Now let's try just changing the fill and stroke of the star. So instead of having a fill, I'm going to add a stroke to the star so that it's a stroke only icon. So you can go ahead and hit plus here to add a stroke. And then if you hit minus here where the fill is, you can remove the fill. It still feels a little bit angular. And so a really quick way you can make it feel a little happier and bubblier is to adjust the corner radius right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and change it to one so that it feels a little bubblier like this. And then one other small thing, it's a little bit uh, kind of like a hairline, so it's a little bit too light when you zoom out from far away. And so one quick way of making this more visible is to just adjust the stroke to be a two pixel stroke like this. Next, we're going to type the text for the button. Again, to get the type tool, you press T and then you click anywhere on the page. I'm gonna go ahead and call this the favorite button. I don't know if it makes any sense to call it the favorite button, but I really wanna teach you how to make the star, so favorite seems to make the most sense. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and bold the text. You can always do that with Command-B. And now we have the text and the star that will be in the button. Next, we're going to convert these two things into a button. So the easiest way to do that is to select both items. Usually, I just do a click and drag like this and then hit Shift-A. Now you'll notice that auto layout has been added. Don't worry too much about the complexities here yet, but it's a really convenient way to lay out objects within a frame into a row or column. If you're familiar with CSS, it's basically flex Flexbox. So here we're using it because you can really easily add padding around this selection with auto layout. So again, to create an auto layout frame, you basically just select both of these objects and then you do shift A. So it doesn't really look like anything happened yet, but then on the right side, you'll see that auto layout has appeared on the right panel. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to add some horizontal padding and vertical padding. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 12 and eight. Um, you'll see, again, it's kind of hard to see because I don't have a fill color yet. So maybe let's add a fill color so that's easier to see the button. If you hit plus here, you can add a fill color to the button like this. You can also adjust the spacing between items in the auto layout group as well. So right now it's four, but if I wanted it to be a little further apart eight, you can also do that as well. I'm also going to round the corners. So to create like a pill button that has 100% rounded corners, you can go ahead and change the rounded corners up here. I usually just pick a really obnoxious number like 100 to 1000 and then it'll look like a rounded corner button. 
So one last thing, since I use a pretty dark color in the background for the button, I probably need to change the color of the text and the icon inside. So the quickest way to do this here is to select the button and then scroll down to this area that says selection colors. So basically this is saying that I have black and pink within my selection. And if I want to change all the black items within my selection to white, I can just do that here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and change to white. So now we're going to make the gallery of images down here. So to start, we're going to draw a square. To do that, you want to press R for the rectangle tool and then hold down shift to draw a square. Uh, we want the square to be 130 by 130. So I would just manually change that up here. Um, now that we have one square, we're going to duplicate this square a few times so that it fills out the rest of the page. So the quickest way to do that is to select the square like this then hold down Option or Alt, and then hold down Shift at the same time to make sure that um, it moves in a straight line. Now that I have two duplicates of the square, I'm going to hit Command D again to fill out the row. And then we're gonna do the same technique for the rest of the rows here. So go ahead and select these three squares, hold down Option, shift click drag down and then let go of your cursor before you let go of the keys on your keyboard and then you will have duplicated those squares and then again do command d twice and then you'll notice that you have a grid of squares that are ready to get filled with images after this the quickest way to fill a bunch of images is to actually save them all on your desktop first you can also download the uh, images i'm using if you're too lazy to find images but if you do command shift k you can go ahead and select all the images you want to upload. I am going to select these six. And what you can do is you can just like drop them in wherever you want them to go. So uh, maybe I want this one here, this one here, this one here, and this one here. And so now I have six images. Also, my layers are a mess right now, but if I was doing this not in the tutorial way, I would start renaming them and grouping them, but it's okay, we can just ignore that for now. So. The next step is we're gonna fill out the rest of the images. So there's a really quick way you can continue to fill the images with the images you have. And so what you do is select one of these images and then do Command Option or Alt C. This is like a copy paste that paste copies the style. And then if you do Command V, you'll notice that you can basically put these wherever you want them to go. So I'm gonna do this. Again, Command, Option, or Alt, C, and then Command, V. So now I have these images everywhere. Now, you'll notice that there's a lot of duplicated images within the profile, which is not that cool. And so a really quick way you can do this is you can select one of the duplicated images. So I'll go ahead and select this one first. And you can actually just crop the image. So there's two ways to crop. Um, one way is to hold on command and shift while you're dragging so you can just crop the image into like a smaller portion. So I'm gonna go ahead and just crop it to her shoulder and then I'm going to hold down shift and resize this box to fill the area. Another way, which is a little bit harder just because it's harder to um, kind of like click and drag is you can select an image. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this one and then click on the image fill here. And instead of having the image fill the area, you're gonna select crop. And then you can crop the image like this within the area you have selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that quickly for the rest of the images on this page. So, oops, where do I, I don't even know where I wanna crop this, so maybe I'll just crop it here. And then you can crop this one. Maybe we'll do it to here. And then for this one, we can just crop it to the corner. And then I think only this one is left. So maybe we can just crop it here. And that's it. Uh, you've created your first profile page. And another quick way you can remix this is now that you know how to add images to fills, you can add a fill to your cover photo so that it adds some visual interest to the page. So I'm gonna go ahead and change it to clouds 
and this is what it looks like. Let me know what questions you have in the comments.